hands everywhere. Our promise is simple. We will do the work, create the culture, and make the investment needed to deliver for this team and for Washington. That quote from new Commander's owner Josh Harris in his first press conference yesterday, Friday, July 21st, and the previous day, Thursday, July 20th, when Josh Harris and his group of partners were unanimously approved by the NFL at the league meeting in Minneapolis. Here on the Next Change Man podcast, I will be breaking down this new change of hands for the commanders, what this means going forward for commanders fans, as well as looking at what are the chances of the name getting changed once again. All of that and much more coming up right now on the Next Change Man podcast. At 4.55 p.m. on Thursday, July 20th, the news broke that Josh Harris and his group of partners had been unanimously approved for the $6.05 billion sale of the Washington Commanders. And they, moving forward, there is obviously a lot of hope for this team. And I know for me, and I've said this before, I'm happy not so much that Dan Snyder is gone. Um, I'm, I'm happy because this is a a change of scenery, so to speak, for the commanders, uh, a, a kind of a, a fresh look for this team, and hopefully a a new new era for Washington to usher in some winning football, uh, something that's been very, uh, very rare here in the past couple of years, something we really haven't seen at a high level. The Harris Ownership Group, uh, Josh Harris, who is the majority uh, shareholder, uh, this group includes Mitchell Rails, Magic Johnson, David Blitzer, Mark Ein, Lee Ansley, Eric Holloman, Michael Lee, Mark Lipschutz, the Morgan family, Doug Strover, the Santo Domingo family, Michael Sapir, Eric Schmidt, and Andy Snyder, uh, no relation to Dan Snyder. That is his entire ownership group. And starting off, getting a, a new owner obviously is going to open up a lot of new opportunities for the commanders as far as stadium. There already have been multiple reports coming out that DC, Maryland, and Virginia have been in contact with the Harris group before the sale even was approved uh, to try and get a stadium deal in place and to start having those conversations. You now have uh, obviously the, once again, a possible rebrand for the commanders, something that I will be touching on later, but also uh, just the, the fact that you're not going to have some of these these issues that you have with Dan Snyder, such as the investigation, such as his uh, opinion and overruling the coaching staff to get certain players in free agency, certain uh, players in the draft. You have a guy in Josh Harris who in his introductory press conference, he stated that, you know, one of the, the big things, big important things that he wants to institute here in Washington is, you know, he knows that to get to that that winning level of, of football and throughout sports, you know, you have to have the right people in the front office. You have to have the right coaches. And that is something that, especially with that that front office mentality, you see that with his other teams. You see that with the, the New Jersey Devils in the NHL. You see that with the Philadelphia 76ers in the NBA. He has a, a system set in place where you have actual GMs who are good at their job. You have a, a system of quality scouts uh, you have a, a system of uh, good head coaches who are able to strictly focus on football, unlike what we have here in Washington, where you have Ron Rivera as that 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 GM slash head coach. I think that structure, and while it, it does seem pretty uh, pretty standard and, and simple here in Washington, we just haven't had that for for a, a very long time. To be able to get a, a high level GM, a high level front office executive who is going to be able to run this thing and meanwhile let Josh Harris worry about uh, getting that stadium deal done, getting the the fans re-engaged, possibly looking at a rebrand. That's something I'm looking forward to uh, because, you know, this, even w- we see the, the current structure with the, the commanders, with that front office, that obviously doesn't work where you have a head coach who is not going to be here in the next, year's, next few years deciding on, what should be the thoughts and decisions of a GM? You know, the GM is looking at the long-term plans 
And when you have a head coach who knows he's not going to be here, um, and this is possibly his last year, he's not going to worry about that long-term plan too much because he needs to win now to keep his job. But this is for Josh Harris to be able to to get this team. You look at his his other teams, the 76ers and the New Jersey Devils. Uh, those are teams that, as far as in the 76ers, uh, they obviously have a MVP um, in Joel Embiid, and they are a, a championship caliber team constantly making the playoffs. And then you look at the Devils, a team that's on the rise in the NHL. So you have to have uh, hope that, you know, Josh Harris does get a, a proper system in place. Roger Goodell, when this sale went through, he had a, a statement. I want to read that to you guys. Uh, quote, congratulations to Josh Harris and his impressive group of partners. Josh will be a great addition to the NFL. He has a remarkable record in business, sports, and in his communities. The diverse group that Josh has put together is outstanding for its business acumen and strong Washington ties, and we welcome them to the NFL as well. I met Josh several years ago prior to his acquisition of an interest in the Steelers, and I've been fortunate to get to know him better over the past few months. I know he has a commitment to winning on the field, but also to running an organization that everyone will be proud of and to making positive contributions in the community. End quote. This is Josh Harris's official statement that he made once the news broke on Thursday. Quote, today my partners and I have been entrusted by the NFL with the stewardship of a great franchise. As a lifelong Washington football fan who grew up here, I know that the commanders are more than just a sports team. This is an institution passed down from generation to generation. From day one, it is our top priority to deliver a championship caliber team, and we will strive every day to ensure that we are a franchise the city and our fans can be proud of. To Commanders fans everywhere, our promise is simple. We will do the work, create the culture, and make the investment needed to deliver for this team and for Washington, end quote. Once again, just being able to get a, a fresh set of eyes to kind of take over this thing, you know, a new approach, I think that that is by far the most important factor here with the, the change of ownership. Obviously, there was just a, a huge lack of, of winning with Dan Snyder as the owner. Getting a, a new guy in Josh Harris and his, his partners, um, mainly Mitchell Reyes and Magic Johnson, who I assume are going to be the, along with Harris, the most involved in this in this process, to have a, a new set uh, of eyes and really a, a new way to go about this managing this team. I think that's going to be the most important, most valuable aspect that is brought by this Harris ownership group but also something that he repeatedly mentioned throughout his press conference uh, the following day on Friday at the fan event at FedEx Field was that he, he constantly compared FedEx Field to the stadium to being their house. And when they have fans at, their, at the stadium, you know, they want to make sure that they are not only treating them uh, with the respect and making sure that they are having that that fan experience that you know he had as a kid uh, he mentions you know rfk stadium you know being able to watch some of this franchise's greatest players uh and the experience that he had knowing that rfk was a, a had that that true home field advantage but he wants to make sure that when these fans come to uh fedex field and when they secure a new stadium and, and build that stadium he wants to make sure that quote uh, when you have guests in your house, you treat them well. You don't have couches that are broken. You don't have TVs that aren't working, end quote. Harris wants to make sure that he is going to be able to build and create, re recreate that experience that he had as a kid. Uh, something that, you know, he has great memories of, as he, he mentioned in his press conference. Something that he wants to be able to pass along to these fans of the, the commanders, the, you know, your younger generation who, who doesn't have those memories to lean back on. And I think that that is a really important takeaway from this is that not only does Josh Harris value the leadership structure, structure of a, a proper sports franchise, but he's also looking forward to and, and looking to make sure that he can recreate an experience that he had as a kid. Uh, which I think is, is something really, really valuable to take away from this. For me as a fan, getting a new, fresh look at this this franchise, it really does get me excited about the future because I know that there is someone who has a new way of going about it in charge, someone who 
knows how to structurally build a, a winning franchise, someone who knows that, hey, once I get the right people in place, you know, I don't need to be involved. Uh, I can just let kind of sit back and let it do its thing if I do if I do the initial building properly. Uh, the past plan just didn't work. Uh, you know, whatever ways Dan Snyder tried to get this team to win, it was a complete failure. And I'm just hoping that this this new approach is going to bring that winning back here to Washington. And it does give me a, a an excitement for the future, knowing that there are possible, um, you know, you've got these exciting changes on the horizon as far as stadium, as far as potentially changing the name, as far as going and getting a true franchise quarterback you know if sam howell doesn't work out maybe they go up and trade for caleb williams the top quarterback in next year's draft out of usc those are all on the table and it really does give me an excitement for the the next couple years now looking back at dan snyder's tenure as the owner for the commanders overall snyder went and had 164 wins 220 losses and two ties he had 15 different starting quarterbacks at week one. Overall, he had a total of 27 total quarterbacks who started a game for him in Washington. Two playoff wins, six seasons where they made the playoffs. And then, of course, he also had the allegations, uh, sexual harassment, financial impropriety, and a uh, terrible workplace culture and environment. Snyder only was able to have three double-digit win seasons, uh, only reaching 10 wins, never did they have an 11-win season. And of those 27 starting quarterbacks, those included Garrett Gilbert, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Sam Howell, Jeff George, Mark Sanchez, John Beck, Tim Hasselbeck, Donovan McNabb, Carson Wentz, Daniel Wolfel, Dwayne Haskins, Case Keenum, Josh Johnson, Rex Grossman, Colt McCoy, Shane Matthews, Kyle Allen, Todd Collins, Patrick Ramsey, Mark Brunel, Jason Campbell, Tony Banks, Alex Smith, Taylor Heineke, RG3, Brad Johnson, and Kirk Cousins. Now, coming up next, I will be breaking down whether the commanders are going to have, with this new ownership, a rebrand, whether they're going to move on from the terrible name that is the commanders, or whether they're going to stick with it and continue focusing on other items such as a stadium. So Josh Harris has been asked a few times now and including Harris, Magic Johnson also went on the Today Show and was t discussing the topic of a potential name change. I'm going to get to Harris first. So Harris has been asked about the name. And I think the most important quote from Harris, he's kind of given some, you know, your, your typical answer where he's going to, you know, hey, we're not focused on that right now. We're going to, you know, he's listed off three things that really, uh, are the top three priorities of the team, which is uh, that fan experience, changing the culture, and getting a stadium. But a really interesting comment from Harris is when he was asked about, you know, what are his thoughts on the name? He said, quote, it's not up to me, it's up to the fans, end quote. And I think that's really important because most fans are not in favor of the name Commanders, uh, there have been polls done where it's been about, you know, a 75, 25 thing of uh, 75% of the fans who voted in those polls are saying that the name needs to be changed. And if Harris strictly is going off of that comment where, you know, hey, we're just going to look at the fans and if they want it done, then it's done. Uh, I think that this name is, is pretty much as good as changed if he's going strictly off of that. Um, no, that's probably not a a uh, accurate way to go about it because there are going to be other factors in place as far as looking at the finances side. It's predicted that a, a rebrand would take about $100 million. Uh, and it, judging from reports, 
that came out before the sale was approved. It sounded like the Harris Group had just barely gotten to that 6.05 billion mark, and I'm sure they could scrape together 100 100 million dollars. But as Harris has stated, it doesn't seem to be uh, super high on their priority. And if they were to go through with a name change, it would not be something that would happen this season. Uh, that would definitely be something that they would go about working on next uh, next year. Uh, because, I mean, you know, training camp starts next week. Uh, August 2nd is, or excuse me, August 3rd is the Hall of Fame game. And then about a week-ish after that, you have the Commanders' first preseason game. So they need to, I think the most important priority on their list is improving the stadium, improving the fan experience, and they have little time to do so. So they're going to focus a lot of the resources on that. But Harris is leaving that option open, as did Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was on the Today, the Today Show, and he was asked about the name. And initially, when uh, Craig Melvin, who was the Today Show reporter, who was with Doug Williams and Jason Wright at the revealing of the commander's name at 2 2 Craig Melvin, you know, was saying, hey, you know, the name was revealed and it was pretty clearly and quickly shown that the fans really did not like the name. Magic Johnson uh, just started laughing. And then once asked soon after that about what the what, the, what are the odds that the name would be changed, uh, Johnson said that they are open to all possibilities. And there's there's a few ways you could look at this. Obviously, if you are a smart uh a smart person you really aren't going to close off those doors to changing the name uh relatively quickly because of the fact that you know it's something the fans want and if you're josh harris you know saying right off the bat we're sticking with commanders you know that's gonna that's kind of gonna dampen a little bit of the excitement a little bit um i know it definitely would have for me if they had come out and said that uh but looking at it the other way you know they're not saying that they, they didn't go and say you know hey we're not really going to focus on that right now. You know, they didn't say, Hey, you know, we, we like commanders. We think it's going to, uh, fans are going to start liking that. And once we start getting the, the winning, uh, that winning culture and we start winning on the field, they didn't say any of that. Uh, magic Johnson could easily have said, you know, Hey, we, we've seen some studies and, you know, fans are, are starting to, uh, like the, like the name, you know, we, studies have shown that when teams start winning, fans begin to like the name a little bit more. Um, you know, he could have said a number of things, both him and Harris. Not only did they say that those options, that option is on the table, but they also pretty clearly um, are definitely going to be looking into that option because of the fact that they didn't go and say, you know, hey, that's not really a, a huge priority right now. Or, or, you know, hey, we, we may look at that, but that's not something that's on our radar there is most likely going to be a, a name change. I think if you're Josh Harris, this is such an easy win. There, the fans do not like this name. Uh, if you were to change the name to go with what the fans wanted, which was Red Wolves, or um, you know, maybe changing it to just getting it off of Commanders, I think would be a huge win. But also, if you're Josh Harris, to get rid of everything that was Dan Snyder, you know, getting rid of the name. That was one of Dan Snyder's last moves as a commander's owner. And if that's something, uh, if you're Josh Harris, to, that you want to erase, uh, what a great way to get rid of that that Dan Snyder stench and create a name that is going to be uh, going to resonate with you uh, as you being the the owner who very quickly during his tenure, tenure changed the name from something that the commander's fans hated to something. And again, if you go with Red Wolves, the top fan uh, option, you know, something that the fans wanted and loved. So really it's a great option for the Harris group to continue to build excitement with the fans uh, by, if you go out and change this name. Uh, and I, I think that it is a very likely possibility that this does happen. And I, it is something that I'm, I'm really uh, excited about if, if it does come through. Now, some quick notes before I wrap up here. The Commander's Training Camp starts July 27th. We'll go through all the way through August 19th. And the first actual football action that we will have is the Hall of Fame game. 
This will be the Jets and the Browns, August 3rd, 8 p.m. I know I will be tuning into that. And then other notes for the Commanders as far as preseason dates coming up because they are coming up relatively quickly. August 11th, the Commanders will be in Cleveland against the Browns. August 21st, at home against the Ravens. And then August 26th, at home against the Bengals. The Browns game starts at 7.30 p.m. The Ravens games at 8 p.m. And the Bengals game at 1 p.m. Well, that's all I got for you guys today on the Next Gen Fan Podcast. If you guys like this episode, please remember to rate this podcast and uh, subscribe to this podcast. You can also find me on YouTube at the Next Gen Fan Podcast. And I would appreciate a uh, subs- if you guys subscribe there and leave a comment. As well as if you have any, you know, Commanders fans, you know, friends, family members, please let them know about this podcast. Spread the word. Uh, I would really appreciate that as well. I salute our armed forces, firefighters, police officers, and emergency personnel. Josh Harris is the new Commanders owner, and there is a bright future ahead for Washington. God bless you, and God bless America.